Ladies and gentlemen, you know my first guest tonight is Superman. He now stars in The Witcher, which returns for season two this Friday. Please welcome to The Late Show, Henry Cavill. There you go. So nice to meet you. We've never had a chance to talk before. We have not, but uh, we're here now. Oh, so, so, what? We're here now. Yes, we are. We are here now. I got to <laughs> tell you, it still freaks me out when I hear your accent. Because you're so <laughs> believably an American to me. You're the, uh, the, you're the most American of all. You're Superman. Uh, thank you very much. I appreciate that. It wasn't always your sentiment, though, was it? It was not always my sentiment. <laughs> On the old show, I believe I made fun of the fact that you had been cast as Superman, and I said, we want a Superman, not a smashing gent. <laughs> but I, I did want to ask you this question. This is a sincere question. I love the look of your Superman. Right. I want to know, how do you feel about the fact that he doesn't have the big red underwear? <laughs> <laughs> Because he looks a little naked to me. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We know how Putting you it feel. Putting out there. Um, yeah. I, I... You know what? It was a bit of a hangover from strong men from 20s or something. And I thought... I thought that actually it, it, it had potential to work. I mean, maybe not exactly those ones. Right, right. But... Uh... but admittedly, his hips are wider than his shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> but I kind of miss the grandma panties. Yeah. On Superman. You know, I I, actually, I really loved my suit. I thought it was I thought it was pretty cool. Um, yep. However, yep. if it were to happen again, I would definitely be open to the idea of adding the trunks in some way, shape, or form. All right. Maybe something tasteful like a little red thong or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Just in the back. Just in the back. <laughs> red thong sounds like the name of a villain from DC. <laughs> I'm the red thong. <laughs> now. You also, and this is a true, true nerd cred, is that you built your own gaming PC. I did. Okay. Yeah. And now, I, I'm not a gamer. Right. I'm not a gamer. What's the value of building your own gaming PC? Why would, why would you do that? Um, it's kind of, it's just the experience. You are building something which is entirely custom to you. It's the doing all the research, learning how to put it together, getting over the terror of these expensive components arriving in the mail and then you just plugging them in like adult Lego uh -huh. and then hoping you don't blow up the house when you press the power button. <laughs> and it's really, really rewarding when you don't blow up the house. Sure. <laughs> sure, and then this thing just has the capabilities that you need. That you want specifically for your needs, yeah. Whether it's um, editing videos, whether it's um, playing PC games or both, um, mm -hmm. it's... Uh, it's tailored to you, and that makes it special. We have a, well, you actually uh, went so far as to make a video of you putting your gaming uh, PC together, Jim. Yeah, yeah. What was that experience? What was that experience like? Are there like? Do you get like? How do? You, where, where do the instructions come from? Or are you just like? It's asking it, friends. And uh, what well, they you you YouTube videos. There's actually a guy called Bitwit Kyle um, who I watched a lot of um, YouTube videos of, and okay. he was absolutely fantastic. Um, he was really informative about how to do all this stuff. And then it's just reading the manual, um, which a lot of people don't do, and they end up asking questions online, and people always respond with RTFM, and that's it. Which is <laughs> read the manual. <laughs> <laughs> We have to take a, a brief break, but please, you stay Henry Cavill and you stay right there, because we'll be right back with more of him. <laughs>